very eloquently earlier. Uh, a, a wonderful speaker, uh, Carla is. And Carla, uh, you've been here before, and you have some new, new information on sovereignty for us. Uh, I do. Thank you, Chairman. And <laughs> Sorry, I'm too loud for the committee. I apologize. Um, thank you. I'm the same person I was when I testified earlier, Carla Garrick from Manchester. I am also the acting president of the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence. Um, I'm here to testify in support of HB 1130. Uh, last year, as many of you know, who still serve on the committee, we got a lot of flack uh, it seemed like the feedback was, hey, guys, this seems premature. Do you, you know what you're doing, what's going on? So uh, we heard that, and so we drafted this in an attempt to try and really come to the table and start to grapple with these uh, difficult ideas, but things that have to be talked about. Um, I think it's fair to say we don't have all the answers yet. And that's okay. We're starting a conversation and it's worth letting our imagination soar. Let's say an independent nation, New Hampshire could be a prosperous and peaceful country along the lines of successful countries like Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, or Switzerland. We would have four times the population of Iceland. We'd be larger than some countries in Europe. We'd be able to work with our neighbors to trade, much like countries in the Shenzhen area in Europe already do. So that whole question about, oh, would I have to go through border control to go to Maine? to my cabin? No, probably not. It's something we could solve. Uh, for people who are concerned about uh, social security, we have a lot of expats who already live in places like Mexico who do receive their social security checks. We could even grapple with something like a dual citizenship. You could be a citizen of the great country of New Hampshire, and you could hold dual citizenship with the United States. A study committee would give us the opportunity and create a safe space for us to explore these ideas of New Hampshire sovereignty. Maybe we could run on nuclear power. I know there are bills in front of uh, various legislators committees at the moment looking at, hey, could we expand our nuclear? And maybe we could export energy. Maybe we would have competing currencies and we would start to attract banks and you know, crypto companies and people to come invest in our great little country. Maybe we would actually become the Switzerland of North America. The only thing that is stopping us from becoming more awesome is the federal government that is literally destroying our wealth. A study committee would be a good compromise between the positions we heard this morning and just saying, hey, we're gonna stick our heads in the sand and do nothing. I will ask you guys to think about any actual reform that has happened on the federal level in the last 50 years. In fact, the bill we heard on the USS Liberty, that's 56 and a half years, and these people are still trying to solve a problem. So, you know, if we're gonna wait, I don't think it's gonna do us any well, uh, do us well. This, um, we already mentioned the trillions of dollars, the unsustained debt, the fact that the federal government literally does not respect us. Um, and we're basically, I mean, New Hampshire is almost like District 12 in the Hunger Games at this stage. We're just this little outpost uh, where they're leaving us while also claiming things like they own your body and that they can force you to inject yourself with things against your will. I say no, I say no to the federal government. I say it's time for all of us to reclaim our right of conscience and support this bill so that we can start to have the conversation so that we don't end up in a mass rush or a panic when the time comes. Let's plan. Let's start to have the hard conversations now. Let's grapple with the real risks that everyone in this room knows we are actually facing. Um, if, if we let the federal government go on, we are looking at more harm, more poverty, and more decline in our standards of living. I know everyone in this room knows we can do better. We demand better. We know there are better options, and it starts with an appetite for change, and it starts here today with all of you. You know, 
you have to be brave to do radical things that actually improve the lives. That is how this country was born. And I ask all of you here today to be brave, to start to actually address the issues that we know are real. I will leave you guys with the words of my great grandmother who was in a British concentration camp in South Africa. No one knows that during the Anglo-Boer War, the Brits had concentration camps and they killed 25% of all Boer women and children in South Africa. My great grandmother would say the five Ps. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Let's plan, let's do it right. Let's show everyone in the world that if you sit down and have the hard conversations, we can come up with solutions that benefit all of us. Thank you. Uh, Representative Levin has his hand up. Uh, Mr. Correct, would you take one question? I will. Thank you, Chair Moffitt. Well, I can tell you, you're in the right committee because everybody in here is brave because they sign the dotted line to give their life to this great country. But I'm still undecided. I mean, we have gone through this in different variations several times. Nothing you just told me has swayed me to think that succession is succession, regardless of the um, different formalities that you put it through, or lack of a better word, the different um, explanations. I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I need a little bit more to, you know, feel like I've gotten, you know, the the uh, the answer I need. Can you do that in a minute? I, uh, I can do it in the following way. I would love to have that conversation with you. If you vote for the study commission, we can have those conversations because we're not saying with the study committee that it's it's a given, it's saying, hey, what are the problems? And if we agree these are the problems, what are the solutions? The best part about not being the chair is I can hand that over to Chair Moffitt. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I, I think at a minimum, you have to recognize that the problems we're facing federally need to be addressed in some way. And so if you have a better idea than us going independent, and of course independence, and I think this is important for the committee to understand. For me, I look at independence as a spectrum, right? So secession is the farthest anchor. I'm a lawyer by training. I understand negotiation. If you want something, maybe you start there so you can start to incrementally get other things, right? So maybe we should be looking at nullification more seriously. Okay, the, the clock is ticking, but uh, Representative Levitt, you had your hand up again. You got my vote. Okay. For a subcommittee. <laughs> I, yes, I'll take it. <laughs> Every, uh, thank you. Any, anything else for the speaker, Ms. Gorecki? Uh, 